Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson and today I'm going to be looking at a game called Vigilante. In this game, the villains have escaped and it's up to you and your team to recapture them and send them back to jail. But of course, not everyone's on the same team. At the beginning of the game, each player is dealt a secret objective. If you're on the good team, you want to work together with your other teammates to get all the people back to jail. If you're evil, you want to stop the good players from doing that. And if you're a neutral player, well, you're going to have your own unique way to win. So who around the table do you actually trust? Now, you're going to be drawing cards that are going to allow you to do things like instant actions or equip uh, weapons or be like a defensive card. But these cards can also be turned in to recruit more heroes to help you fight the villains. Now, each round after the players have taken all their actions, you're going to be rolling two dice secretly behind your screen and select one of them to add to the pool, which may or may not trigger events. Which, of course, the events could be good, but most of them are going to be bad. You need to be watching what the other players are doing to try and figure out what they're, what they're doing to see if they're on your team or not and whether you can trust them. So, it's a game of hidden identities, which is part of a larger game of defeating villains, which, you know what, I think sounds like a really good idea. So, will this game come out as a true hero, or should it just be sent straight to jail? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and we'll come back to my final thoughts on Vigilante. Here's Vigilante set up for four players, but I'm only going to be showing one player's player board. And for this overview, I'm going to be showing you the introductory scenario. The scenario card will have how many city cards each player gets to start the game, how many rounds the game will last, the number of starting events, the composition of the villain deck, and finally, which identities to choose. All the card decks are shuffled and placed in their appropriate spots, and three heroes are turned up to form a market. From the event bag, draw the number of events as shown on the scenario card. Each player then takes a player board and dice and action markers of their chosen color. Next, take the identity cards as shown on the scenario cards. So for this example, we're going to be taking two good, one neutral, and one evil identity. Shuffle them all up and give one to each player. They will secretly look at the card and it will show you what team you're on and what their win conditions are. Each player then gets six allegiance tokens, two of them for each identity. Behind their screens, they're going to return two of these tokens, one from each of the roles that they're not. So if you're a good, you're going to end up with two good tokens, plus one neutral and one evil token. Turn your four face down, shuffle them, and place them face down on your player mat so you don't know which one is which. Each player is then dealt two starting hero cards and picks one and places it in their one slot on their player board. The other starting hero is discarded. Finally, each player draws the number of city cards as shown on the scenario card. Now the game is played over a number of rounds as outlined on the scenario card. After the final round, whichever players have met their mission goals will be the winner or winners, and there can be multiple winners. At the start of each round, the current first player will draw two events out of the bag and secretly choose one and return the other one to the bag. The one that they kept is added to the event stack in dice order. Next, each player will continue to take turns until all players have used their four actions. On a player's turn, they can do a few free actions, then they do one main action by spending one of their action tokens. The free actions are playing one-time use cards from your hand. Now, these have a little trash can symbol on them. You can also attach equipment from your hand to one of your heroes. Each hero can only have one piece of equipment attached. You cannot remove or move equipment during this free action phase. You'd have to take one of the inventory main actions. If a hero is ever defeated, you're going to lose all the equipment attached to them. The other type of city cards are ambush cards, and they're going to describe what they do and when you can use them. There's also an agency cards deck. If you have at least three villains in your jail, whenever you draw cards, you can pick to either the city card or the agency deck card to draw from. Now, once you've done your free actions on your turn, you will take one main action by spending one of your action tokens. You can draw a card, or you could recruit a hero. Each city and agency card in your hand has an influence value on it. You would have to discard cards from your hand equal to or greater than the influence cost of the desired hero card from the market. Whenever you recruit a hero, they automatically go directly into the first open spot on your player board. If you already have four heroes, you cannot recruit any more. Also as a main action, you can choose to fight a villain. Reveal the top card from the villain deck and check if there's any text effects and resolve them immediately, unless it says to jail. The villain then attacks. Add damage cues based on the attack chart on the villain card. The chart is split into four boxes, which represent your four different spots for your heroes. For all your surviving heroes, add up all of their attack values from your team. If your attack value is equal to or greater than the villain's health, you put the villain into your jail and apply any to jail effects from the villain card if they have any. 
If the villain's health is higher than your team's attack of value, the villain escapes and you return the villain to the bottom of the deck. Now, if at any time your heroes have equal or more damage cubes on them than their health, they are immediately defeated and placed into your defeated hero's area. If this happens during the villain's attack, this hero is immediately removed to the defeated area and is not included in your team's overall attack value. There are three different levels of villains that are going to be revealed as the game continues. The higher the villains, the stronger they are, and the nastier effects that they have. For another one of your main actions, you could heal one cube for one of your damaged heroes. You can, as an action, remove any number of equipment cards from your heroes and then go back into your hand. They can only be reassigned during the free action at the start of your next turn. You could also trade a card with another player. You offer your cards to one of the other players, and it must be a one-for-one -one trade if they agree. If they don't agree to trade, then the action is not complete and you actually take another action instead. And finally, as a main action, you can use one of the actions from your heroes if they have any. Once you have used your last action token, you're going to roll both dice behind your screen and place one of them next to the event track. When all the players have used their four actions and have placed a die by the event track, all the events that have at least one matching die will be triggered, as well as any equipment cards that has a matching die symbol on it. And no matter how many of the same number dice match an event or equipment, they're only ever going to be triggered once. All players then retrieve their dice, pass the first player token counterclockwise, and start the next round. After the final round, all players reveal their identities, and whoever has met their mission objectives is the winner. You could have one winner, or you could have multiple winners, and those multiple winners don't all have to be from the same team. And that's how you play. Now let's get back to see what I thought about Vigilante. So, theme and components. The theme in this one works quite well. You're recruiting heroes to fight villains, you need to figure out who you can work with, the theme is cohesive throughout, and really nothing is glaringly disconnected. Overall though, I thought they did a really good job of integrating the theme, an interesting theme, into the cards and the gameplay. For the components, they're good for the most part. The player boards are kind of paper thin, but they're really just on the table to hold your cards, so they've held up very well. The cards are decent quality, and the art on the cards is very good. The player screens themselves have a lot of very useful information on them, and it really helps the players play this game. It's kind of got the round structure, it even gives you the breakdown of what you can find in each de uh, deck. Very useful. The only kind of miss I see is this ridiculously small event bag. It's three quarters full with those event tiles. You can't get a good mix, you can't get your hand in there. Definitely replace this bag if you get this game. Um, considering how much thought and effort went into the other components, this bag really kind of stands out as a miss, and I don't know why they just didn't give you a bigger bag. So on to the gameplay. The game is surprisingly simple, which makes the game very approachable. And because the gameplay is simple, the social deduction can easily be mixed into the gameplay. You're kind of not overwhelmed by the other things you're doing. Unfortunately, I don't think it was quite pulled off in this case. The gameplay, for me, is interesting in the beginning, when you're building up your team and fighting the first few villains and kind of attaching the equipment, but then the game just kind of stalls. In most of the games I played, very few heroes were defeated. Yes, there was always a few in each game, but they're going to be quickly replaced. I had one game where my last three rounds of a six round game, all I did was heal my hero. My goal was to get a certain number of villains in jail, which I did, and have my heroes without damage. I drew cards hoping for a healing card, but then just spent two full rounds of every single action, I healed a hero. I had, in the same game, there was another uh, player who by round two or three was fully equipped with all their heroes and was just blowing through the villains deck because they needed to get nine villains. They did nothing else but that. You can't voluntarily discard one of your heroes, and you can't replace them if you buy a new hero, and you can't sacrifice them when a villain uh, attacks. The heroes you buy are always better than the hero you're starting with, but it takes some work to get rid of that starting hero. Because of that, you're not going to be buying new heroes often. You're going to be drawing cards and fighting villains. But if your mission doesn't require too many villains, there's kind of not much else to do and you just kind of sit there. Okay, so maybe it's kept that way so you can concentrate on the social deduction side of the game. But for this, it also doesn't quite work for me. There aren't enough ways to determine which team someone is on, and even if you do, there's kind of not much you can do with that information. If you're evil, you want to make sure that good players don't fulfill their mission. Good players want to jail six or seven villains for every good or neutral player, depending on what your mission is. There's not a lot of variance in the goals. And I'm not really sure it matters in the end. It's a nifty idea, but I'm not sure the missions really support that social deduction. The evil players will try and play cards to hurt other heroes, but you're pretty much outing yourself as soon as you do that, because there's kind of no good side of it. You can't say, oh, I'm going to hurt you, but I get this benefit. And it's not like the good players really can do much against you. They can't vote you out, they can't stop you, they can maybe play hurt cards against your heroes, but the main evil goal is usually to stop you from collecting villains. Okay, so maybe the event track is a way of doing this kind of social deduction. 
I felt again that this was an interesting idea that just didn't pan out. Somebody draws two tiles from this event bag. If you're the evil player and you draw a damage one hero or draw an event card, which would you choose? Again, it just never felt like it really mattered, as there was only, I think, six good tiles in here and 25 bad tiles, so the likelihood of getting two bad tiles is very high. So if someone puts out a bad tile, are they evil? Or did they just end up with what was more likely to happen, have two bad tiles to pick from? So maybe the dice, again, work, but this only happens six times during the game, so it's really hard to get a read on the other players. And again, it's not like you can stop them from triggering. I can't put out a die that says I'm going to stop your die from triggering an event. There's also the Allegiance tiles that are placed out. Many games, people just ignore them because they never got the opportunity to look at them because there are too few ways to look at them. So I'm really not sure why they're in the game. As in a four-player game, you only usually have six rounds and the cards for looking at other players' Allegiance uh, tiles are in the agency deck. So it's going to be a little while before you can even hopefully draw a card which allow you to look. There are other ways to look in the game, but they're too, in my opinion, they're too sparse. So, would I recommend this game? No, I, I just don't think I would. There are a lot of really good ideas in here, and there are some sparks of some clever ideas, but it just doesn't come together well enough. I really like the art and the theme of this one. It really comes together. I like that there are three different allegiances, and definitely think the neutral players are definitely the most interesting, as are some of the evil ones. There are four different scenarios, and they do alter up the gameplay. And I wish there was more that kind of changed up some other rules. There is an advanced variant in the box for mercenaries. Definitely include that with your plays. It definitely adds a little something. Some of the cards were interesting, but the interesting ones tended to be kind of the reaction cards. You know, if a player damages you, oh, you play this card and you can take a, one of their villains. I like that, but there were too few of those. But for me, the game just didn't come together. There seemed to be too much filler in this game to get through to really get to the good parts of the game that I enjoyed. For all the good points I just made, it feels like there's too much mediocre you have to get through to really get to those good points. I'd also like to see more differences, different ways for the good players to win, different ways for the evil players to win. Not just a variation of you win if all the good players win and you can reduce their villain count by whatever, by having villains or having equipment in your card. I also want more scenarios. I want more interesting cards to play. I also want the social deduction to be more impactful. Definitely in some scenarios it is, but sometimes you can almost ignore that entire side of the game. And if what you're left with is just not strong enough to carry the entire game by itself. And for the fun I did have in the game, and I will admit, I had fun. I just don't think it warrants the, the 90 minute play time for, that this game says. So overall, I'm gonna give this game a six out of 10. I don't think it's a bad game. And I definitely did have some fun parts during my plays. But I do think this game would have been more enjoyable for me if they con had concentrated on one side of the gameplay or the other. Make the social deduction side more interesting and more impactful. Or maybe made the fighting villains and managing your team heroes more interesting and more dynamic. Ultimately, it felt that they tried to do both to get the best out of both worlds, but it ultimately left both sides of the game a little worse for wear. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.